Today, AI is getting scary. The benefits of AMD being open source, AMD's shocking Ryzen release, and Ryzen 8700G gets even better. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. First up for today, I don't go over AI very often, but let's just say this story has me looking around for anyone named John Connor. The story originally comes from NTU Singapore, where researchers were able to jailbreak popular AI chatbots like ChatGPT, Google Bard, etc., where they were then able to get the chatbots to answer questions that they usually wouldn't. Of course, that's not a huge surprise, but the scary part happens when they later taught another AI to learn to create its own bypass. Basically, when the AI learned to do this, it could do it again even after developers fixed the bypass with a patch. It's called the master key method because you effectively have a permanent jailbreak. The AI works by learning and adapting to whatever fix was issued to the original bot. To jailbreak an AI, you effectively have to outsmart it to get around its safety measures. So when a new safeguard is put in place, the AI learns and adapts to it. It's effectively AI learning to hack other AI. And if that doesn't freak you out, I don't know what will. There's been a lot of talk around the safety of AI, but if a malicious AI can simply get around any safeguards we put in, it's not good. Good. Chatbots used for customer support will now hand out sensitive customer data, not to mention when they start putting it in military tech. For their part, the university has contacted AI chatbot providers with the proof of concept, so maybe they can figure something out, but so far, it's not looking good. And that's why I trust Surfshark VPN to keep my data safe when I'm online. Between companies tracking everything you do for ads, to hackers hoping you click the wrong link, there's people around every corner waiting to know everything about you, so make sure they can't by by encrypting your data and masking what you do online. Luckily, today's sponsor does just that, and Surfshark VPN does it without keeping logs, so you know your data will remain private forever. To top it off, they unblock streaming platforms to watch movies you otherwise couldn't in your country. And with over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, your video will get to you faster than you can say cheap. Which is another great part about Surfshark VPN. You can share one account with all your friends, meaning you can split the already tiny bill for even more savings. And speaking of that bill, when you visit Surfshark.com slash GamerMeld and enter the promo code GamerMeld, you'll get an unbelievable 83% off in six months for free. Once again, that's Surfshark.com slash GamerMeld and use code GamerMeld. Next up for today, open source. It's something tech enthusiasts discuss fairly often, but a lot of times when talking the benefits, they seem more abstract. Things like better security, more openness, and those are real benefits, but we typically don't see specific examples of this. One recent example was shortly after AMD made FSR3 open source. Mods became available right after that, letting gamers add upscaling tech to far more games. That's a really big and clear benefit of open source. Your games got an actual FPS boost because of it, but it doesn't stop there. As a recent report from 4Onyx claims that new code was recently merged to the Mesa R300G driver. That driver supports the ATI Radeon R300 through the R500 series GPUs. Now, if you've never heard of ATI before, or it sounds familiar, you just can't quite put your finger on it. ATI is the GPU maker AMD bought back in 2006 to start their graphics division, and the GPUs that just got updated support are over 20 years old. The R300 came out in 2002, even before AMD acquired the company, and yet the GPU is still getting driver updates to to this day thanks to the open source community, and the update is more of a prerequisite for future updates. Of course, given how old it is at this point, you can get nearly anything today and it would be way faster than any of these GPUs, plus I highly doubt many people actually use them, but that's the beauty of this. You don't have to switch, and it's all thanks to it being open source. Next up, it's been nearly seven years since AMD launched their AM4 platform. In terms of technology, that's prehistoric. I mean, the next Indiana Jones could be some AI-generated Harrison Ford digging up Ryzen 1700 from a crypt in Egypt. And yet, AMD is actually planning to release multiple new CPUs for the platform, which means they're likely still planning to dole out even more updates. Originally found and shared by Momomo underscore US, retailers have already begun listing the upcoming Ryzen 7 5700X3D and Ryzen 5 5500GT. 
Some even claim to be in stock. Of course, we heard rumors about these a little while back, but they look to actually be happening. Currently, the 5700X3D is listed for between 270 and 280 euros, which is around 10 to 20 euros cheaper than the 5800X3D. Of course, as usual, early pricing like this is typically more than the actual release price, so I wouldn't trust that too much. When it comes to specs, the CPU looks to have a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz, which is 400 megahertz lower than the 5800X3D. 800 x 3D. The price will ultimately determine how good that really is. Next we have the Ryzen 5 5500 GT, which is a 6-core 12-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost of 4.4, and it's priced between 134 and 160 euros. Then there's a Ryzen 5 5600 GT. I mean, it's unreal. AMD is seriously releasing multiple new parts for their AM4 platform. Of course, AM5 is still really expensive after all this time, so it makes sense, but it's still wild that they're still supporting their last gen platform. And obviously that's great news for anyone still on it. And lastly for today, we have brand new benchmarks for AMD's upcoming 8700G desktop APU. This time, we actually get to see GPU performance and we get more specs. As you can see, both of these benchmarks come from Geekbench. And unlike before, we actually get a boost clock as well as base clock. Remember, the 8700G is rumored to be the fastest of the lineup with 8 cores and 16 threads. And according to this, it has a base clock of 4.2 GHz and a boost of 5.1. That's obviously a massive jump from the 5000 series, but don't forget that it also comes with a much more powerful integrated GPU. And here's where things get interesting. The iGPU was spotted at 2.9 GHz, which is actually 100 MHz higher than the 780M. So AMD looks to be getting a bit more performance with the thermal headroom of desktop. When it comes to performance, in Vulkan, it scored 35,427 points, and in OpenCL, it scored 29,244. For reference, the Vulkan score beats the GTX 1060 and actually gets really close to Nvidia's GTX 1650. In OpenCL, it doesn't do as well, but the mobile 780M actually beats this score as well, so it clearly can do better. At the end of the day, AMD's next-gen desktop APUs are looking more and more impressive. Let's just hope their price is equally impressive. So while that does it for today, what do you think about new CPUs being brought to AMD's old AM4 platform? And what about their upcoming APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure you pick up Surfshark VPN down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.